Got another paper three question for you to try. So this one covers a titration calculation, drawing of reflux apparatus and some organic reactions. Hope you like the video and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, why don't you consider doing that? But as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is to calculate the three titrers for the accurate titrations, the trial ones being left out. So 23.10 for the first one, 22.30 for the second one, 22.40 for the third one. So we're looking for concordant results, so they're results that are within 0.1 cm cubed of each other, and you can see two and three are, that's why I've ticked them. So we take the mean of those two, so the mean titer is 22.35 cm cubed. So like I always do with these rather long-winded titration questions, just draw out a sequence of pictures just to try and uh, visualize what's happening. So on the left-hand side, we're starting with that 100 cm cubed of 0.5 moles per centimeter cubed NaOH. You'll notice that I've um, worked out the moles of NaOH in there, 0.05. Then they add the three aspirin tablets, so that's going to react with some of the sodium hydroxide. And the sodium hydroxide that's left over is then put into that 250 cm cubed volumetric flask, made up to the mark, and then they take out 25 cm cubed and use that in the titration with the 0.2 moles per cm cubed HCl. And we've just worked out that mean titrate, 22.35 cm cubed. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out the moles of HCl in the mean titer. So just concentration times volume in decimeters cubed, 4.47 times 10 to the minus 3. And because of the 1 to 1 ratio in the titration reaction, the moles of NaOH in that 25 cm cubed sample will be the same. Next thing we need to do is work out the moles of sodium hydroxide in the 250 cm cubed which is also the moles of sodium hydroxide left over after the reaction with aspirin. So we just multiply by 10 there because 250 is 10 times 25. So 4.47 times 10 to the minus two. Now we know the moles of sodium hydroxide left over after the reaction with aspirin. We can work out how many moles of sodium hydroxide actually reacted with the aspirin. So that's the original moles minus that 4.47 times 10 to the minus two, 0.0053. And then if we factor in the information at the start of the question that the aspirin reacts with the sodium hydroxide in a one-to-one -one ratio, there must be 0.0053 moles of aspirin in those three tablets. So if we divide by three, we get the moles of aspirin in one tablet. And then if we multiply those moles by the MR of aspirin, 180, we get that there's 0.318 grams of aspirin in a tablet. They want the answer in milligrams, so we just multiply by 1,000. So there's 318 milligrams of aspirin in a tablet. Moving on to part B and the label diagram for reflux. So something like I've drawn there is absolutely fine. So obviously you need a heat source. Under, uh, I've gone for a round bottom flask. You could go pear shaped flask there if you wanted to. Uh, and then straight into a vertical condenser. Just make sure that you've got no sort of gaps. Uh, where the flask joins onto the condenser, otherwise the vapors could leak out of there. Uh, they're going to want to see the correct water flow, so in at the bottom, out at the top, and there should never be anything um, sort of on the top of the condenser, so it needs to be left open basically, uh, otherwise pressure would build up and you don't want that. So moving on to the last part, this equation for the reaction of aspirin with excess sodium hydroxide, You'll notice I've already put three moles of NaOH into the equation because of what we're told in that first line. So first thing we need to think about here is um, what functional groups we've got in aspirin. So we've got a carboxylic acid group and we've got an ester group. So the carboxylic acid can definitely react with sodium hydroxide and we'll get the sodium salt of that. And also the sodium hydroxide can hydrolyze the ester by breaking this bond here. So I've got the beginnings of the product here. So you can see we've got the sodium salt part of the carboxylic acid, and we've got the this part here. When the ester bond breaks, that'll also become a sodium salt. You'll notice I've highlighted this carbon here where the um, single bond of the oxygen is, and that's because 
ordinarily we'd get a phenol when you hydrolyze this ester bond here that would become a phenol but remember phenols can also react with sodium hydroxide so that part there is actually going to become O Na. So we're obviously going to form some water as well. So I'll just put that in and we need to think about how many waters are going to form. And I've found the easiest way to balance this is just to look at the oxygens. So you can see in the reactants, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven oxygens. And then if we just look at the organic products um, for the oxygens, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So we need two more, two H2O.